All right, so here's how this is going to go. We have nine position groups to go through here, okay? Uh, and here's how we rank this. You obviously have quarterback, running back, offensive line, tight ends, wide receivers. That handles the offensive side of the football. You have defensive line. Okay, so what we are including in defensive line are interior defensive line, defensive tackles, nose tackles, and defensive ends. Okay, then you have edge rushers. That's all your jacks, sams, all those guys. Okay, that's a position group. Then you have the safeties group. Then you have the corners group, which includes the star position. Okay, and then you have the linebacker group. There are nine position groups at the University of Georgia. And here's how we're going to do this. Each one of us are going to rank our position groups one through nine. The room will then discuss those rankings, debate those rankings, and then we will go on to the next ranking group. I'm going to start first. Okay, and here's how I'm – actually, I'm going to start last. Jay will you're up first. How do you rank these teams or All these right. position groups? So my first team that I have is I have the Jack at number one. Ooh. Yep. I got offensive line at number two. I got the inside linebackers at number three. DBs at number four. Safeties at number five. QB room at number six. Ooh. Running backs at number seven. Defensive line and defensive ends at number eight. Wide receivers at number nine. And then tight ends rounding it out at 10. Mm. Did have 10 position groups. My bad. Um, all right, I, got, I got a couple things that you got to defend here. <laughs> Quarterback at six is really, really low for a room that's got the number one quarterback I know, arguably in the country. But I yeah, kept play like, uh, you go ahead. No, I was I was to say I agree with him on that. Yeah. It, I kept going back and forth with it because I was placing the quarterback room all around. And then finally, like this was a list I ended up with. And it was it's honestly just because like holistically, like when I think about it, I thought of the quarterback room as this. That position group has the most to lose. That position group, like mm. if, if your number one guy is out, like you're you're basically cooked. Not to say that Gunnar Stockton or Ryan Puglisi wouldn't be successful or anything, but like there's a major drop off there from Carson Beck to the next guy. So it made me a little hesitant to say that they're one of the four best position groups of Georgia. Again, that's not a reflection of Carson Beck's ability. It's just that compared to these other rooms, the depth that they bring to this. I think that, that that's why I put them at that position. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think the other thing I, I, I need you to defend, wide receivers are having a really, really good spring all the way down at nine. Explain yourself. It, it Probably because I'm still very hesitant to just push all in on this position group. Like you know I've heard what? it before, man. You know what? I am too. I, I've heard it I before. I'm, I am at the point now where I'm – show me on Saturday. You know stop, stop telling me. Show me on Saturday. I don't mm -hmm. want to spoil anything, but for the question segment that we have, that's one of my questions. Mine is too. I, I don't want to spoil too much too, but will the receivers be as advertised? That's yes. the number one question I have. It's like I have heard over and over and over again since I've been covering this beat that, hey, this is the year. We got guys. We got guys. We got guys. We got guys. And then also, like, again, it feels weird to say, like, the tight end group is the worst position group at Georgia, in my opinion. But, again, that just goes with, like, Oscar Delp, that's amazing. You, you got a third-year guy in that room. He's going to be really good for you. After that, I, I don't really know. Where'd you put the tight end room? I put them – there's 10 position groups. I put them at ninth. Yeah, I put them 10. So we're, we're all in agreement that the tight end room – I mean, due to what's been going on, right? Yeah. Plus, I mean, also, early. like – Look at what the tight end room was the, for the last three yeah, years to what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, in comparison to what it was th for the last three years, it's like, eesh, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with the talent in the room. It's just, it's not as elite as it once was. Why do you like the O-line group so much? I just think from the five that you have right now, like you can plug in whoever you want at left guard. I don't care who you do it. I think that that group from top to bottom, like they're as solid as, almost any other position in this they football team. They have the fewest team. amount of question marks mm -hmm. by yeah. far. I mean, yeah. those questions that we had about them coming to spring get answered really, really quickly. I it's think just you have, one who's going to play. Like, are you going to be great at center? Yeah, and I think you have a tremendous balance of you got Tate Rallage and you got Xavier Trust who are true vets. I mean, absolute true vets in that room. You got a returning starter in Ernest Green at the left tackle spot. You have a bunch of reps spread across the room and Dylan Fairchild, Jared Wilson has been in the mix, Micah Morris. And then also hearing these inklings about Daniel Calhoun, that's going to be a dude. Monroe yeah. Freeling looked good at right tackle against Vanderbilt. I just think from top to bottom with the guys at your travel squad, that, that's almost hard to beat. I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and spoil it. State, yeah. yeah, I'll go ahead and spoil it. Like, he, uh, for offensive line is my number one for that exact reason, too. Like, yeah. you have six to seven guys that I feel like you could plug anywhere and have success on the offensive line spot. I have a counter take that I'll get to when I get to my rankings. Okay. But um, the other thing I have for you, Jack at number one, is there enough oxygen in that room to say that that's the best room? 
Because there's only one of them on the field normally. At a time. I know, and I think it was. I think it'll be a little di bit different this year, like we talked about the other night. They're going to play a little bit more of a rotation. But. And uh, honestly, if I were to redo the list, I probably would change that. Uh, I don't know who I would put in number one. I guess bump up offensive line in number one potentially. But I just think maybe the depth is what really was like. Okay, there, yeah. you got options. You got a lot of options. And again, the great point on saying that there is only one person on the field. I think that absolutely should play a role in this. But I mean, and maybe it is because I have a little bias of Michael Williams playing that position. I'm excited for that. But. It's a huge bump to that room. Man. Yeah. Just from a production and skill set standpoint. All right, Kirby, what do you got? All right, so I'll go ahead and say I had a hard time doing this because – I think we all did. It's because so the thing is hey, like – hold on, hold on. You gave yourself an ISO, but not Jay Will. I didn't did you know he gave me okay, one. Okay. I, was, I was over here dicking around. <laughs> Yeesh, my bad, my bad. Thank I was you about for to say, bro, what the me? hell? <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, my bad, my but bad. But no, no, I, um, I had a hard time doing this because there are some rooms that have – immense talent like more talented than others but then there's other rooms that have a lot of depth yeah and i think the offensive line is probably the best of the two, both worlds where there's a lot of great talent in that room and there's a lot of good depth so i have them at number one i have inside linebackers at number two i think you have three really solid guys for two positions mm -hmm. there i put running back next this is the healthiest and the deepest the room's been in probably four or five years so then i have corner slash star i think the talent that you have around that especially with dale and everett moving to that star position now mm -hmm. you've got four really solid options there i went to receiver for fifth Mm. just because I think that they do have a lot of talent in that room, but like you all said, it's more of a show-me standpoint now. Like I, let, We've heard about it, we're hearing great things in the spring, let's see it on Saturdays. I have Jack next. There's just not a lot of breathing room. There's a lot of talent in the room, but yeah. it's one guy, and he's probably going to be the, the guy. So after that, I have safeties. I think losing Javon Boyd and Tyke Smith really hurt that group. There's talent in there. K.J. Bolden seems to be making new strides, but – it's. I just don't think that it's going to be what you've had the last few years. It's either bank on like guys who have experience being a backup, mm -hmm. or by the end of the year, the five star hopefully taking over. Right. I, I just I believe in Dan Jackson and David Daniel Sisvon. I also believe there's a reason they haven't been playing the exactly, last few years. exactly. Then I have quarterback for a lot of the same reasons that Jay will had him. Carson Beck is the best, if not one of the two best quarterbacks in college football this year. He's an All-American, bona fide, might be the Heisman winner. But the problem is you go after that and it's like Gunnar Stockton, a guy who hasn't really gotten a lot of playing time. The most playing time he got was in a blowout against Florida State. And then a true freshman, Ryan Puglisi. I mean, even Kirby Smart has said, like, we're trying to get this room deeper. We're looking yeah. for that fourth quarterback. So that's kind of the indication as to why I have him so low on the list. Then we talked about tight end. It's just not – the room's not what it was past two or three years. Mm. And then defensive end, defensive tackle. I think that looking at that, this is probably the weakest link of the the Georgia team holistically, but it's still a very talented room, and there's still a lot of guys that can do good things in there. Yeah, they need a flash player in that room. Yeah. They need a flash player bad in that room. Um, I think they thought – Xavier, or they still think Xavier McLeod has an opportunity to maybe be that high-end flash player, but it's, it's a matter of consistency moving forward. All right, a um, couple things I, I want to ask you about, maybe push back on you. Um, you already talked about quarterback being that low. I'm, I'm in agreement with you on the tight end defensive line class. Um, you know what? I don't have a lot of pushback. Oh, running back high. High. Yeah. Three. Really high yeah. for me. I, I just felt like – I'm looking at more. I, I did a lot of this in looking back at year, recent years. Yeah. Like last year, you started the season with Cash Jones as your running back. Mm -hmm. This year, it's, hey, is Roger Robinson or Trevor Etienne going to be the starting guy, which are two great options. And then, <clears> oh, by the way, wait till Branson Robinson gets healthy. I think that there's a lot of really, really good options in this running back room that you haven't had necessarily in the last few seasons. So I think that's kind of why they gave that boost. I think this right now, that room is a little bit lower on my rankings. Talk to me when I know Branson Robinson's Branson Robinson. That's again. fine, yeah. And I don't want to, I don't want to cause things for concern. And I know Kirby said he, he should be good in, in several weeks from now, but that was not your typical ACL injury. That no. was a PCL. Okay, that was PCL and ACL. That, that's, I thought it was his patella tendon. That's what I call a PCL. Okay, your patella. I mean, so it is a it is a big. I know the PCL is actually the back, but I, I get all kind of, <laughs> you know. Hold on. Source. Yeah. But no, I, I do think that I might have running backs just a little high. I think that's just of excitement of having that room being so loaded. But So many teams trying to leverage later spring games and water down depth charts slash position battles to try to retain the roster. A lot of, uh, a lot of finagling, a lot of uh, maybe finessing going on right now in some of these position battle discussions. Hmm. The opposite of what we're talking about at Texas A&M. Right? Hmm. Texas A&M is like, we got a guy. Those other two guys are just placeholders this spring. F them. We'll see if they hit the portal. Everybody else is kind of like, no, nah, baby, you got a shot. You got a shot to win this job. 
Um, so yeah, that I, 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 I so, sorry to stop the show. Every once in a while, you got to read those. Um, I want to hear what your rankings are. All right, here we go. Ten to one, one to ten. One to ten. One to ten. You know That's what suspense? we did. We did right, one, one to ten. ten. One to ten. One to ten. Number one. I think Georgia has the best combination at linebacker in the country. Yeah. Agreed. And I don't do the I don't like to do the it's not even close thing, but I think Smile Mondon's a top forty five, top fifty pick in next year's NFL draft. I think CJ Allen might have a chance to go down as like a top three linebacker at the University of Georgia. So like boom, bang, done. And then you add guys like Raylan Wilson into that group. You add guys like uh Jalen Walker into that group. I'm considering him an inside linebacker until he's not. Until they just say, all you do is play on third down, Jalen Walker gets added into that room. He's a tremendous lifeblood. By the way, I've been ranting about the freshmen. They're ungodly creatures out there running around. They're incredible. So I think eventually that room's going to be just – we're going to talk about that room at the linebacker position in 18 months like we talked about the tight end room for three years at the University of Georgia. I think that is the facts. Now, you guys had the quarterback position ranked lower. I had it ranked higher, and, and and I have a lot of differences in my rankings because I ranked, do you have a difference maker? Do you have an yeah. absolute showstopper at that position? And I think like linebacker, they have two of them. Quarterback, they have one. Corner, they have some really, really high-end football players. And then offensive line is at four for me because they don't have one of these. Like Michael Morris might be a first-round draft pick. Dylan Fairchild will be a high second-round draft pick. Tate Ratledge will be a high second-round draft pick. Ernest Green will be a day-two draft pick. Okay, uh, you know, we'll see what happens at right tackle. Xavier Trust probably going to be a fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth-round draft pick, right? They don't have one of these stamped blue chippers right now at this position though they have a tremendous amount of depth where i look at the quarterback spot i have them ranked too because they have a blue chipper they have carson beck they have one of the nation's best and when you have one of the nation's best i think you get vaulted up these rankings or at least you should be and i know you guys talked about the significant drop off or at least a noticeable drop off between beck and, and gunner stockton i think gunner stockton did enough for me in the florida state game to know that he's serviceable if you throw him out there you're not gonna die your season's not shot and, and you take it out back and kill it it's not one of those situations and the puglisi upside for me yeah it's there it's, it's there. there it's tremendous uh the, just the amount of talent and raw traits that that football player has i'm with y'all from a depth perspective but if you're going to be shallow on depth quarterback yeah you know what yeah. I mean? like, yeah it's great sure. to have four but the fourth's never going to get on the field no yeah. you know what i mean so Absolutely. It, it's been that kind of deal i put corners at three um because it, it is indeed including the star and and when i rattle off these names i see sec starters uh Dalen everett's an sec starter i don't care what you think of him i think he's an sec starter julian humphrey's an sec starter daniel harris is an sec starter um ellis robinson sec starter janelle aguero sec starter kyron jones Let's hold off. But tremendous talent, tremendous upside. Ja'Cory Thomas can start in this conference at other schools. You're very, very deep. You have like first world problems at corner in the sense of, will we find two guys or will we be playing five guys this fall? Hmm. Um, so I have them there because of just a tremendous upside. Now, granted, maybe some attrition in this room. I don't want to forecast attrition, but your head coach is talking about if they choose to stay. You know what I mean? Like, there's going to be some attrition. I have offensive line there. Talked about it. Lacking star power, but God dang, is it deep? And does it have zero questions? Okay, they might as well just stay healthy this spring. Don't just practice. Do what you need, but y'all ain't got to answer no questions. I got edge at five just because, again, there's not enough air in this room. There's just not. You know, you got Michael, Damon Wilson, Sam and Pimba, Chaz Chambles, you name it. They got plenty of options to get after the quarterback and stop the run on first and, and early downs. They got plenty of talent there. It's probably the highest ceiling of a group, but just not enough air for them to breathe and, and all those guys to get meaningful, meaningful extended snaps. I put safety in at six. You have a star player. You have a bona fide, guaranteed first-round draft pick, which made me want to put them higher. But outside of that, there's a bunch of unknowns, mm -hmm. man. Like, the chat's talking about Dan Jackson having playing time and experience. Yeah, in 2022? You get a lot of playing time in 2023. This guy's been sitting on the shelf for 12 months, right? David Daniel Sisyphon. The most playing time that guy got, I think, was in 2020 when uh, uh, Lewis Seen damn killed Kyle Pitts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, that's the most playing time David Daniel Sisyphon's got. And even that game, uh, old buddy that transferred Major Burns was getting a lot of time in that in that game. So, David Daniel Sisyphon been on this roster a long time. Super smart football player. Probably going to get a, a targeting penalty or three this fall. But has not played a lot of football. So there's a lot of questions at that safety room for me. I put seven wide receiver. I'm with you guys. 
I am at a point now where I'm just, I, I'll tell you when they're doing great. I'll tell you when I'm hearing from it, but I'm not putting stock in it. I'm not buying it until I see it. And then once I see it, we're pushing the chips in on, on Georgia being, you know, elite at that position. But I know they got talent. They've always had talent. Produce, 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 produce. I put running back at eight. Um, just with Branson being healthy, I'll, I'll have a new discussion. Whenever I see 22 back on the field and, and looking like 22 did, we'll have a different discussion. However, the building feels better about the running back room than they ever have, or yeah. at least than they have in recent memory from what you're talking about, right? Shit, last spring, Cash Jones was taking reps with the ones. I love Cash Jones. I think Cash Jones is a great football player, great running back. He's not Georgia's number one running back. Shouldn't be in any normal year, right? I have defensive line number nine for all the reasons you guys did and had the tight end room at number 10. Um, it's the thinnest the tight end room has been in a long, long time at the University of Georgia. Yeah. For 